Clean water is something that everybody needs, whether it's my elderly grandparent, the kids that I teach, my dad, myself. Explaining to a seven or eight or a nine year old, when they come to me and they say, is this water safe to drink? Can I drink this water? Why should that child have to ask that question? only way to get water outside and you can see it's all starting to come apart a bit and this is how we water the little tiny community garden back here but sometimes I have um, little bottles and I have to fill them up with spring water try to water plants too and that's real difficult so that I'm not getting all the lead that's coming from the house and putting it into the soil. I've been watering them with spring water, but then that's the spring water that I use to make my food and to drink with. I do have filters on the faucet, and I use the filters to wash other things. Um, but I try not to cook or, or eat with the water that comes out. That corrosive, if it can do that to metal, imagine ingesting that. My name is Anthony Diaz, and I am one of the co-founders of the Newark Water Coalition. Most urban cities have issues with their water. Uh, NRDC released a report, and it said, if you, chances are, if you live in a community of color, there is a problem with your water system. So the first question we get all asked all the time is, is this environmental racism? Yes, point blank period. This is environmental racism. Why is it disproportionately affecting people of color? And it's because, you know, People can get away with it here. People can sweep uh, problems under the rug. And that's where, you know, folks like us come in and we're trying to fight this. It doesn't kill you instantly. It kills you over time. You can't that's, smell it, you, you can't see it. You can't taste it. You, you know, all of these factor into the struggle. And now during COVID, you're talking about a pandemic. How do I maintain, you know, childcare? Where is my kid gonna go to school? Is it safe to be outside? Oh yeah, and there's still a lead crisis going on. It's like living in a third world country. And then with COVID, you're drinking a lot of water, you're stuck inside a lot of times, and then you're going through your bottled water really fast. My name is Kat Ramos. I was born and raised in Newark. It becomes a, almost like a dichotomy because yes, water is life, but it's also the poison at this point. There are people who don't have a clean filter because they can't afford the clean filter after they use the first one. And so you bargain. My kids need to eat. We got to wash this stuff. We just have to take our chances. So my name is Jaron Rothkop and I'm from an organization called 501c3. And I'm very grateful to have been invited to Newark to bring our water box program. So what the box does is it takes the water from the city service and it runs it through three-stage filtration system and a UV filter. So once the water has gone through these three filters in the UV treatment, it is typically more clean than the bottled water that you can buy in the stores. Your community, like many others in the country, has been given a lot of misinformation over the years about whether your water is safe to drink. And what was very important to us was that we develop a testing regimen that was extremely transparent so that you know that the water that you're getting from the water box is clean, it's safe to drink, and it's been tested by the people here at the Newark Water Coalition. And it should read zero or low. There we go. So it said zero. Uh, the last part of the program is that we wanted to make sure that there was no cost to NWC over the life of this program. <laughs> you have this inherent trust that once you turn that faucet on, that that water is clean, that water is safe to drink. And in the city of Newark, they cannot say that right now. And that's a problem. This is right and wrong. This is poison water versus unpoisoned water, clean water versus unclean water. There's so many times where you hear is, oh, I don't have to pay for this or do you need my ID? And I said, no, I just need you to show up. 
That's all I need you to do, show up and tell somebody. It's been harder and harder, especially with the pandemic, to get these resources. And so uh, this has been an absolute blessing because it's gonna change the game completely for us. Being able to connect it anywhere and provide this resource without going to a store, without needing money, this is gonna change the Newark Water Coalition and the city of Newark. And as, as long as we have jugs and as long as we have containers, we can put it in people's hands. We can give that water out. If we really wanna heal, then we can heal as a community. We can come together and lean on each other. I'm a dealer of hope. You can't be an activist, you can't be an organizer and not have hope. This water crisis can be fixed with us like that. The people of Newark still need clean, safe drinking water, and you can help them right now. If you cared about what you just saw in this video, please visit 501c3.org backslash waterbox, and you can help right now. Thank you for watching.